So this is Legazoi in the Italian Dolomites and this, this is the view that we have from our room now. We are at a mountain hut at about 2,700 meters. It's built right on the top of the peak. It's just an incredible place to stay. And we're gonna be here for a couple of nights with the, with the winter workshop that we're doing now. Now, what makes this place particularly special is because we're so high up, we get really great opportunities to shoot sunrise and sunset, get the last light of day, get all the color and the alpine glow from up amongst the peaks instead of being down in the valleys shooting up we're actually up amongst the peaks in quite a few cases shooting down if i just pan the camera around you can see over here we've got all these peaks which are going to get the day's last light and it's just so, just an incredible thing to be doing with a telephoto lens picking out abstracts picking out shapes seeing where the light falls and already now we're about an hour away from sunset and you can see there's quite a nice sky we're getting quite good light some of the guys are already on the deck shooting and um it looks like it could be a really nice session. So I'm going to head off down there and, uh, and get the camera on the tripod and see how it turns out. Now you get a really epic vista here, but a wide angle lens doesn't work for a couple of reasons. First of all, it pushes all of those peaks away. And secondly, you get too much foreground and sky, which don't really add anything to the composition. As the most interesting part of the scene is across the middle where the mountain peaks are. Because of this, it works really well, just isolating parts with a telephoto lens and focusing on the detail, which is what I did here with this image of the Croda de Lago peaks. This part of the scene always pulls my attention to it. I really love this line of peaks here and the two ridges create these two really strong diagonals, which is a very strong compositional element. So I zoomed in to give them prominence in the composition, completely filling the frame. The tall peaks here work as a main focal point and the fact that they're lit by the sun coming in from the left of the frame really makes them stronger in the image and pulls the eye towards them. Now, in terms of exposure, I kept to a lower aperture in order to get a faster shutter speed because even though the camera's on a tripod, wind can still create shake. Uh, and because of these peaks are about a kilometer away, I didn't really have to worry about depth of field. Now, the next morning we got up for sunrise and conditions really didn't look great. It was seriously cloudy with no visibility at first and we didn't think we'd get any shooting done at all. But it was also incredibly windy, which although it makes it harder to shoot, it also means that there's a good chance of the wind blowing the clouds away, which is actually what turned out to be the case here. And after about 30 minutes of not being able to see anything at all, we actually got some amazing light and colour. Now, the scene is a little bit more backlit at the sunset, and on this particular morning, I decided to focus on shooting some panoramas. So in terms of technique, I talked a little bit about panoramas in my previous video about the Dolomites. It's important to shoot manual to ensure the same exposure across the scene, especially in situations like this, where the light is so dynamic and changing so quickly. And it's also really important to have a big overlap of something like 30 to 50% to ensure that Lightroom can stitch the images properly. Additionally, in this situation, I bracketed each shot because there's a really wide dynamic range with the sunlight coming in from the left. And I really wanted to make sure that I captured all of that highlight detail. And as it was so windy, I shot each frame two or three times to ensure that I had a sharp frame as it's really easy in the wind to, to find that the camera shake has blurred one of the frames and that's going to ruin the whole panorama. So for this shot, I increased the ISO just a little bit and had the aperture wide open to get as fast a shutter speed as possible. Because again, when you're shooting something so far away, you really don't have to worry about depth of field. Now, the view from up there is so good that it's always tempting to create a really long panorama that takes in the whole scene, which is actually what I did here. Now, the light is really lovely and it does capture the whole scene, but to me, the image feels as though it lacks quite a bit of focus. There's just too much in it. And that heavy cloud on the right, compared with the side of the mountains covered in snow, which is essentially a large amount of negative space, those areas feel like they dominate the image a little bit and it, it dilutes it overall. And also, I'm not crazy about panoramas that are so long and thin. I generally prefer an aspect ratio that's a little bit anamorph anamorphic, something like a three to one ratio. So I cropped down the panorama a little bit to get this, which is still around 150 megapixels. So it's a huge image. Now, I'm still not completely sure which frame it is that I prefer, but I think that this one feels a little bit more focused with the peak of Chivetta having a lot more prominence uh, perhaps though, it, I think maybe it loses some of the uh, some of the atmosphere of the larger panorama. 
later that day, we left the refugio with Lagazoi and went back down on the cable car. Now, when you're going up, it can be hard to appreciate the view because the car is usually really full of skiers. But being skiers, they usually ski back down the mountain. So when you go down on the cable car, it's usually relatively empty, which gives you a really good chance to take in the amazing views. After we left Lagazoi, we headed over to the western side of the Dolomites, stopping off at Val de Funes to capture the iconic San Giovanni Chapel, which we've I've photographed so many times. Now, scattered throughout the Dolomites, you find these tiny chapels in some truly incredible spots, and San Giovanni is probably one of the most photographed. It has this amazing position, standing isolated in a field, with forests and the, and the Gisela Odele. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, but the Gisela Odele group of peaks behind it. Now, we had hopes of there being a really nice sunset, but there was just too much cloud in the western part of the sky, which was obscuring the sun, uh, so we didn't really get a lot of direct light. We didn't get any color in the clouds, so we ended up just doing a relatively straightforward shot in flat light. But I actually like the simple tones, and with the snow, the shot works quite well here to contrast with the trees, and the figure in front actually helps give a little bit more scale to the scene. When it comes to composing this, you're kind of dictated by the peaks at the top, which you really want to have them complete. You don't want to cut any of the peaks off. So the left side of the frame is always going to start a little bit to the left and left side of the leftmost peak. And on the right side, I give a little bit more space to balance the figure here with the church. And also because the church is facing into the image, it's facing towards the right, I wanted to move it off center. So that meant putting it onto the left of the frame, slightly to the left of the center, because it just feels better to give the church space in the way that it's facing so that the, any space that you have is in front of the church rather than behind it and it, it feels as though the church is looking into this open space here which makes the whole image just breathe and feel a lot more balanced and harmonious. So when we finished shooting we hopped on these sledges that we found down at the bottom of the field and basically just sledged back down to where we left the van and the following morning we were up at sunrise out in the Alpe de Suzy which is this high alpine plain that's just covered in these small wooden huts and trees with these incredible twin peaks, uh, Sassalungu and Sassapiato, and again, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, with these incredible peaks at the back of, this, of the plain overlooking these rolling hills that are dotted with these huts. Now, I come here a lot and we come here always with the summer workshop and it's always an incredible place to shoot. Quite often you get these really nice misty, misty sunrises and when the light comes up at the side of the plane, it, it cuts across the plane horizontally, cutting through the mist and gives you these really nice abstract shots. But in the winter, when it's covered in snow, you get this whole different identity. Now, this place is actually a little bit harder to shoot than it looks. You've got this obvious focal point of the two peaks here. And because they have so much weight, they're quite big elements. They really need to be centered which kind of affects how you're gonna frame uh, the rest of the shot and the things that are in the foreground. You have to be very careful not to be cutting huts in half or, or, or having trees or huts too close to the edge of the frame. Now the foreground with all these huts and trees and these small valleys, it works really well, but if you shoot it too wide, the peaks lose their significance in the frame. They get too small. Uh, and also the elements in the bottom of the frame, need to, you need to find balance and find the right spot where, where everything works and it actually, it's not too heavy on one side or the other and everything is arranged quite neatly. And that can be quite a challenge. So we found this spot here, but to be honest, I'm not really sure that this image works. Now I, I framed the image with a wide angle relatively tight because the snow in the foreground was really churned up and that was really distracting but there's still a lot going on in the foreground with all these huts and trees, and I think it might be a little bit too busy. Now, with direct light at sunrise, when the light's coming horizontally, this kind of thing works better because it gives light and shade and depth to the foreground. There's parts of it hidden in shadow and other parts of it are lit. But in the winter, the sun comes up directly behind the peaks, so you don't get that horizontal light on the plane at sunrise, which leaves everything looking a little bit flatter. Compositionally, I was much happier with this shot that I took with a drone. Now I had to fly over the churned up snow and take the drone quite a long way from where we were standing. Uh, but I actually managed to arrange it around these huts, uh, which gave me a much cleaner composition because I think too many elements in a composition can be distracting. And you need to ask yourself if the elements that you're including in the frame 
are actually adding to the image? Do they give something to the frame? Because if they're not adding to it, they're actually going to weaken it by distracting and diluting and overcomplicating. So while I prefer the sky in the previous image, uh, I actually like the cleanliness of this composition more, I like the simplicity of it more. And the other elements to consider within the composition are things like the weighting. Now, again, as I said before, it has to be, these peaks have to be centered because they have quite a weight in the composition. And then they also need to be balanced with the huts, which also need to be relatively centered because if you had them too far to the left or right, then they wouldn't balance with the peaks at the back. And framed like this, it also gave me these great lines coming in from this ridge at the side and from these ski tracks here on the right side. And then beyond that, there's also a strong inferred line from this hut here, which is kind of looking at or pointing directly towards the peak. But for me, while these peaks are the obvious draw and you kind of you can't help photographing them, you really have to do a shot of the plane with the peaks at the background. One of the things I love most about this location is using a telephoto lens to pick out isolated parts of the scene, things like this hut here, and really focus in on them and make a really simple, more abstract shot. Now, because there's so much going on all over the plane with trees and huts and ski slopes, you have to be really careful with the edges of the frame to make sure that you've got nothing sticking into or intruding into the frame and ruining the simplicity of it at the top or the bottom or the left or the right, because you want to try to keep the frame as clean as possible. And quite often what that's going to mean is moving around a lot. If you walk 20 meters to the left or right or walk back up the hill, just to give yourself a slightly different perspective where you can get a clean shot and compose it properly. Now, this was my favorite one that I captured that morning. I really like the simplicity of it. I really like the balance of the hut and the tree. And I like the way that the lines work as diagonals going through the frame towards the focal point of the hut. Now, I had to crop it a little because there were trees at the bottom that were kind of encroaching into the composition. But because you have these really strong horizontal lines and the two elements, the tree and the hut, are actually arranged horizontally, it's very sympathetic to this, to this kind of letterbox, to this panoramic crop, because the whole image is very horizontal. So the crop actually supports the composition. And again, what I've done is I've placed the hut on a third because of all the negative space on the left, that's actually the direction that the hut is facing. So you want the hut to be facing into that negative space into the frame and that's supported by the way these lines on the snow are going so for me this is a really simple shot but i think overall it's probably one of my favorites from the entire trip so that's pretty much it for this trip to the Dolomites in winter this year. Now, I hope you've enjoyed these videos and found them useful or interesting. Uh, I've just got back from Lofoten last week, so I'll have a couple more videos about shooting there to follow quite soon. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and, uh, and take care. <laughs>